Hello there, I hope you're having a great day so far. So today we're building a bright and warm alleyway house on a lot in Willow Creek. An alleyway home is technically just a house without a street front and just opens into an alley, but for this build, for this build I mean a very narrow and tall building that's constructed in an existing alleyway between two older buildings. And it's usually built in cities that don't have a lot of residential space or land to build new residential spaces. And they're kind of cool because they tend to be really modern in style and they juxtapose against the older buildings sandwiching it. So I used the debug buildings from Discover University because I didn't want to do that much building, lol. And because they are a bit more traditional style to sort of highlight the newer building between them. Um, I actually made a dark and moody alleyway home a long time ago in Newcrest, but I have since acquired some cooler stuff in The Sims, like Dream Home Decorator, and The Sims have also added cooler things, like new artwork and stuff. So I wanted to make a new alleyway home that has like lighter and brighter vibes, and so that's what we're doing today. And I picked out a pastel color palette, and you can already see I plopped a baby blue wainscoting on top of the island living slatted windows. And I said this before, but the wainscoting from the Decors for the Max kit is so damn versatile. I love it so much. So obviously nobody will live in the debug buildings because I only wanted the alleyway build to be functional. But I decorate the front and back of the debug buildings to make it look like people live in them and like add Victorian fencing and hedges to make them look more lively and blend the whole build together. Um, I also try to blend the build into the surrounding neighborhood, which kind of feels like the city center. Um, so I made this little front sidewalk area with some benches and public garbage bins and some lampposts, um, the kind you might find in a city. Um, and the backyard gets the same treatment as the front, obviously the alleyway home gets a much smaller backyard because it's just so much narrower than the other homes, but I really like it. It feels cozy because it's so small and, you know, I still managed to squeeze in a little outdoor dining setup with the full-size barbecue. Um, the indoor dining space isn't that roomy, so I figured they could benefit from an outdoor one. And I also have like a little garden area, as you'll see in a bit, and it has like vertical planters from Eco Lifestyle and like also the base game planters. So you have some, you know, variety. Yeah. So I'm also going to populate the fake people's backyard. Um, it won't be too detailed. I just like add enough stuff to make it look like people are living there and this isn't just some ghost town. Um, so your sim is spending a lot of money on stuff that isn't technically there because <laughs> you have to buy the whole property and this is your neighbor's stuff technically. Um, I guess your sims could use it if they walk through the debug houses, which is rather easy. Um, you could pull the fences all the way through and connect the front and back fences to prevent sims from walking through the debug houses actually and then lock the gates. Um, the fences don't provide that much privacy. <laughs> Actually, when my family first moved into our house, which was brand spanking new, um, when we bought it 20 years ago, we didn't have fences. Um, apparently that's normal for newly built houses, but yeah, all our backyards were fully open to each other. And that's actually how my parents became friends with their neighbors. Um, cause when the weather was nice, everyone would be out barbecuing and in Toronto, Canada, most folks are bringing out their barbecue the moment it gets warm. And so everyone saw everyone barbecuing in the backyard. And then they just figured it would be cool to do like one big barbecue for the block. Um, but that was 20 years ago and we have fences now and all our neighboring friends moved away. I think we and another family are the only ones left on the block that were here when the neighborhood was first built. And we don't really know the newer folks that much. We see them every now and then, usually after a huge snowfall and we're all out there shoveling. Um, actually, just this past winter, we had a really major snowfall like one of the biggest ones for a while. And my neighbor across from us was in a rush to get to work because he's a cameraman at a local news station. And he's always the fastest one to clear his driveway on the block because he has one of those fancy snow blowers. And he actually usually helps people um, with the snow blower. Um, oh, by the way, um, this is an alleyway kitchen and an alleyway home and it's so cute. Um, but yeah, so he was in a rush to go to work and he cleared his driveway um, the fastest as always, um, but the road still had yet to be cleared. And he thought if he got fast enough, um, if he started fast enough on his driveway, he could push his way through the snow and get to work. Well, that was a rather optimistic thought because he got about three meters. Yeah, in Canada, we use meters and he got stuck in the snow and then the rest of us had to shovel him out and we did get him free. Um, and then he called the supervisor and requested a work from home. 
And as a cameraman, that means you film your neighbors. So he filmed the bunch of us struggling to shovel. And yeah, it was really fun to watch him uh, hopping around in the snow in the middle of the road with like the massive camera on his shoulders. And for that dining space, I do move uh, the dining set a little bit further back so you can actually access the fireplace as you might have seen in the opening shot. But yeah, uh, the first floor is almost done. I decided to use this space for the kitchen and dining room and the powder room because I figured it would be really annoying <laughs> um, to have to lug all your groceries up to the second floor um, if you had a kitchen there. So yeah, uh, eating, dining, all in the first floor, so it's easier. <laughs> um, and yeah, and I really wanted to take advantage of the height of this thing. So for the second floor, I opened up the living room and made this huge balcony into an entertainment center um, so your Sims could like enjoy the views. If your Sim was an instant influ influencer, this is where they would be taking those candid shots of them drinking coffee and whatever. Um, I was also thinking of turning it into a yoga studio or art space. Uh, you could definitely do that because there's already a living room inside. Um, this one is much smaller than the one outside, but it's a little bit cozier and I do um, kind of stray away from that pastel color palette, but I think it still works. It's really cozy and nice and there's a nice stereo. Um, but yeah, there's a bar on the one outside um, and there's also enough room out here so that your sim can follow a Plumboomba um, dance video and get their workout in. So I think that's really cool. Um, it is a little funny watching them do that in such an open space. Like your sim gets a nice view, but so do their neighbors. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's pretty much it for this open space. And I do add a fan so you can uh, keep cool in the summer. So, okay, onto the third floor. This is where we have the bedroom, closet, and main bathroom. I only have one bedroom in here because I really didn't bother with doors. Everything is out in the open. Um, like there isn't even doors to the bathroom or the closet. Um, I had to make sure the bed was pushed up against the wall as close as possible because um, I'll put a dresser on the other end of the room and a plant and I needed to make sure there was space for your sims so they could access both sides of the bed. So if you have a couple, they can both sleep at the same time and most importantly, they can woohoo. Yeah, very important. They could woohoo in the shower, but obviously we want options. We deserve options. Also, I need to talk about the curved furniture that came in the Dream Home Decor Decorator. Ooh, that's a weird word. Um, game pack. So I thought the pack, I bought the pack rather recently and it's been out for a while. And in the first little while, I was kind of put off by the curved furniture because it really wasn't my style. But now, oof, it's so cute. Like I used the curved TV console in the outdoor living room area or the indoor living room area rather. In this dresser here and the curved edges is actually kind of refreshing and in this swatch it really reminds me of my mom's dresser which she had since she was a teen like in the 70s um yeah so you go through the closet to get to the bathroom you might call it a walkthrough closet and eh? eh? is that is that a technical term actually i was making a joke but maybe that's what these closets are actually called i'll have to check but this bathroom is so fancy it's actually bigger than the bedroom but since I didn't want doors, I can have the bathroom in the front of the stairs. Like, you don't want to walk up the stairs and see someone on the can. Like, that would be really unpleasant. So I put it in the back so catching someone pooping is less of a surprise. Um, if there are two Sims living here, they would definitely have to be one of those couples that are really comfortable with each other. Like, really comfortable to be able to make this bathroom-bedroom situation work. I don't really like building bathrooms in The Sims because I think... I tend to think of them as a secondary space and rele relegate them to tiny six squared corners of houses. Um, and so they usually end up looking the same. And that's why I made the bathroom a bit bigger than the bedroom too, right? Because I got to have a little bit more fun with it. And I do love this bathroom. I have one of those like open showers that I love in terms of its like aesthetic appeal, but not so much for its functionality. I tried a couple on my vacation two weeks ago and these showers are really messy and drafty. So the fourth floor is where we put the office and tiny art studio and the ladder to the roof. And this one was kind of tricky because one of the debug houses kind of pushes in through the walls and you can see the edge of the roof. I couldn't make the building, like I couldn't move it farther away because I wanted the walls to touch. I guess I could have switched it out for another one, but I was really stubborn and I love that building. It was really pretty. Um, I couldn't hide the roof in the glass covering part, but I put some counters and cupboards in the stair landing area. Um, actually, I wanted to do a little kitchenette because that would have been super cute and super functional. Um, but no, the roof ruined my plans. 
As for the office, I covered the roof with some handy dandy bookcases and I slotted some lights there in there to brighten up the room. The overhanging lamp isn't bright enough to light up the room, at least in build mode. I guess you can fix it in game. Um, but I do like that there are lights in the shelves because it's just so fancy. Like you have a whole light system just for your books. And instead of going for a regular schmegular desk, I put in my favorite dining table, the glass one from the fitness stuff pack. Um, I, in real life, I wouldn't put like a glass table in such a small space because I would definitely bruise my hip um, on a regular basis. Oh, and I decided to turn the glass covering area into an art studio slash like greenhouse. Um, like I said, I wanted to capitalize on the views of this build. And since the backyard is so small, I also wanted to give the house more a outdoor space. And the roof is the best place to sunbathe. So I plopped two sunbathing beds um, there. And I've never used the metal structure from Eco Lifestyle as a roof, but I love it. So yeah, there you go. A bright alleyway house. Um, if you like this build, don't forget to like and subscribe. And you can download this build from the gallery using my Origin ID, Builds with Coffee. That's Builds with Coffee, all lowercase, no spaces. Thanks, and we'll end it off with some screenshots. Bye!